Hello there, Mr. Chan here for Algebra 2. We're going to start a new section, 6-5, Properties of Logarithms. Please turn your note takers to page 157, and let's get started. Now, what you see here is the graph of y equals log x with some points highlighted. Let's go ahead and finish the table here based off of the corner points up there. The x values they concentrate on are 3, 5, and 15. Let's go ahead and put in the y values for each of those points. We have 0 0.477. We have 0 0.699 for 5. And of course, we have 1.176 for 15. Now, let me remind you what this log graph is. It's the inverse of y equals 10 to the x. y equals 10 to the x is just an exponential growth function that looks like this. And if you compare the two graphs there, they are a mirror image along the diagonal y equals x. So that's where that came from, okay? So note the relationship between those two graphs. Moving on down, question B says, what is the relationship between numbers 3, 5, and 15? What is the relationship between logarithms 3, 5, and 15? So 3, 5, and 15, that's pretty straightforward. Anybody can basically see that 3 times 5 equals 15. And somehow the logarithm values, meaning this row in here in the table, are somehow related as well. If you closely inspect 0.477 and 0.699, you will see that if you added those two logs values, it will equal to the third one. In this case, log three plus log five does equal to log 15 from the table. You know, those values of 0 0.477 plus 0 0.699 does equal to 1.176. And ladies and gentlemen, we've just uncovered one of the properties of logarithms and we're going to go ahead and use that information to uncover other possible logs, okay? Now, let's backtrack a little bit. Let me explain what that means. For example, what does 0.477 mean? It literally means 10 to the power of 0.477 equals three. Now, if that's still confusing, that's okay. 0.477 is a decimal you're not familiar with, but if I converted that decimal into a fraction, it might make a little more sense. What if I just change it to a fraction, 477 over 1,000? And from there, as a rational exponent, I can convert that into a radical, meaning this is the 1,000th root of 10 to the 477th power will give you the three, okay? That's how the decimal becomes a fraction and how the fraction becomes a radical. And that's how it's related to three. Just wanted to make that connection right there. All right. Definitely an interesting connection. Let's go ahead and answer some other types of logarithm problems based off of information about log three and log five and log 15. So for letter C, we have a couple of questions. Hey, what's log 45? Now, interestingly, focus us on three, five, and 15. If you think about it, 45 is just a number that is three times 15, right? And we have those values based off of the table. 3 and 15, we can just grab the log values of those two 
x values and just add them together. That's it. Pretty straightforward there. So log 45 is the same as log 3 plus log 15. Okay. How about 75? Let's take a look at that number. Log 75 is, what is that? 15 times 5? Yeah, that is right. Yeah, yay. So this is simply uh, just adding log 15 plus log 5. And that's how you can utilize information from your previous problems to kind of get that in, um, value itself. Interestingly enough, the bottom habits of mine switches gears and asks about, hey, what about natural logs? Well, guess what? Natural log, which is base E, basically is log E of X, is basically the same. It's the same. If you try to punch in ln 3 plus ln 15 on the calculator, you will get ln 45. ln, of course, stands for natural log. All right? Natural log is base E. Log up there is base 10. I need to backtrack really quickly and mention that. Notice the original oh. equation, and I apologize for not pointing this out originally, doesn't have a base number. So if it's not there, from the previous section, the mention is base 10. The common base. All right. Well, that's my introduction to this uh, section. Let's try some problems. Now remember, the name of this whole section is called Properties of Logarithms. Back in Algebra 1, you learned about properties of exponents. And actually, they're connected in this section. And they are related, definitely. All right, here we go. Properties of logarithms. Let's write this at the top of the next page. Properties of logarithms. Now, guess what? They're similar to properties of exponents. That you learned back in Algebra 1. Properties of, of exponents include these three major ones. A to the M times A to the N. This is called the product property of exponents. Is equal to M plus N. Yeah? So this is the product property. Next one. What happens if you divide? exponents. The rule here is to subtract. Here this is the quotient property. Oops. Of exponents. Let's think about how this applies to our properties of logarithms. All right. Let's look at, we have, under properties of logarithms, we have a property called the product property of logarithms. Let's do that one first. The product. Okay. So pay attention here. Log base B, that's really not a big deal. You can ignore the B there, of M times N equals to, we just showed this in the opener, right? log base b of m plus log base b of n. The key here is addition, okay? We have a quotient property of logarithms. Any guesses what that looks like? Remember, in the first one, the product property of logarithms, we added here, log base b of m divided by n, what's the opposite of plus? You're right, subtract. 
And that's how the properties of logarithms are related to the properties of exponents. See the plus and the minus? Here we have the plus and the minus still. Hey, very interesting connection, right? Okay, we do have one particular one, the power property of logs. If you have log base b of m to the n power, you guys notice that power up there? That power goes somewhere. It gets tossed or thrown to the front of the log. So this equals to n times log base b of m. So that's where that goes. One way, when I was a student, I remembered mentally in my head for the first two properties is that we're going from one log into two logs. Now, kind of like lumberjack, splitting one log into two is one way of thinking about it. Splitting one log into two logs is one way of looking at it, okay? And before we actually do some more examples, I want to warn you some common problems that might pop up. We don't have a property of, we don't have the sum of logs property. Some kids might think about doing something like this. Oh, I'm going to do a log of m plus n from a single log. Guess what? They might accidentally do this. Log m times log n like that. That does not exist, okay? Same goes for subtraction. This does not exist, but it happens a lot from kids who are not thinking about going from one log to the next. Those do not exist. Those do not go from one log to two from, it's only product and quotient. Keep that in mind. All right, let me zoom out so you can kind of keep an eye on the properties. Example one, prove the quotient property of logarithms. Wow, it's a proof. Now, I don't, I actually want to change that a little bit. Let's change that to a product property. So do that for me. I'm going to do the product property of logarithms. We're going to assign some variables here, everybody. Let's do that. Here we go. Zoom in a little bit. Doo -doo -doo. Very good. Let's go ahead and assign x equal to log base b of m. Great. Also, y equals log base b of n. Let's go and convert those. And when you convert those to exponential form, you get these guys. There we go. The base is b, boomerang to the other side. Remember that? To the x power equals, oh, comes back. The argument. So b to the x equals m. Same goes for the bottom one too. b to the y equals n. Great. I'm now going to multiply these together, okay? So b to the x times b to the y together. Now, b to the x is m, right? And b to the y is n. So I'm just writing that. Oh, from algebra one, b to the x the same base, and b to the y the same base, when we multiply them together, according to my property, I need to add the exponents right there. So great. So I'm gonna go here and do b to the x plus y. Awesome. And now I'm gonna go ahead and convert to logarithms, everybody. Here we go. We'll take this expression I have right down log 
equals. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Base b to the power of x plus y, that's the boomerang. So that's x plus y, yeah. and come back. That equals to m times n, like that. Oh, interesting. I'm now going to substitute, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and substitute x and y. Didn't we define that earlier? X is log base b of m, great. And I'm gonna substitute with the other one y plus log base b of n. And ladies and gentlemen, I've just proven to you the quotient property of logarithms. Kind of reminds you of geometry proofs, right? Kind of a cool slick one there, yay. All right, so I know this video is kind of shifting around here a little bit. Remember, going from one log to two, and remember it's plus and minus, okay? And the power you fling to the front. All right, we're gonna do two types of uh, manipulation for logarithms using the properties. We're going to expand and contract. Example two is called expanding logs, meaning we'll take one log and expand it into multiple logs. In reverse, for example three, we're gonna shrink it down to a single log. I mean, in other books, they don't say single log, they might say condense. We're gonna get, condense it down to one single log. So I just wanna give you a contrast of those two. All right, here we go. Example 2a, we have log base seven of r to the third, t to the fourth, divided by v. There's a lot going on there. We have multiplication, we have exponents, we have division, and the least important thing here is the base seven. Just, you know, just ignore that for now. But in terms of order of operations, the most important thing here is, are we, do we have to deal with the powers first? Or do we have to deal with the multiplication? Or do we have to deal with the division? Now look at it. Out of the three, the division bar affects everything. It's not the cube, it's not the fourth power, it's not the multiplication, because multiplication is only between the R and the T. But the main thing is the quotient right there. <clears throat> That's the most important one, okay? And according to my single log to two logs property, the, the property is to split it up like that with a subtraction, okay? So let's do that with number 2a. It's the numerator, subtract the denominator. We're going from one log to two, ready? Here we go log base seven of the numerator stuff subtract the log of the denominator stuff yay so log base seven of v is pretty much done let's concentrate on the first log here and expand that there the cube and the four are not important because they're an affecting the individual. However, in the middle of them, we have this product that affects everything inside that's left. So that one, I'm gonna go ahead and apply that property by expanding that into two logs with a plus sign. Here we go, follow along, Let, ask questions if you have any questions. Log base seven of the first term, r to the third plus, the second term, t to the fourth. Bring that other thing down, nice, okay? <clears throat> so this is getting to multiple logs here. The last thing for those two logs is the power. Those are the powers, those are last. So those are easy, you just fling those to the front for both of them, and you're done. I love this one. Three times the log base seven of r plus four log base seven of t minus log seven, base seven of v. And ladies and gentlemen, that's how you expand a log 
using those three properties that we introduced. Not too bad. Well, guess what? Those properties of logs also apply to natural logs. And the only thing that we have with number seven is the division, the quotient property. Let's go ahead and apply that. Any questions about A though? Got to ask you guys. Let's go ahead and split that natural log into two. Natural log of the numerator uh, minus the natural log of the denominator. Now, you might think that we're done here, but the 225 is kind of suspicious, isn't it? It's actually a number that is a perfect square. Oh no. This square, you see where this is heading? Powers, properties of exponents, right? And logarithms is basically 15 times 15 or simply 15 squared. And you see where this is heading, right? That square is the exponent property. Fling that to the front. So that's applying the power property of exponent of logarithm, sorry. And then our final answer, moving the two to the front, is seven uh, natural log of seven minus two natural log of fifteen, and that's your answer. All right, any questions? All right, let's go ahead and go backwards. We're gonna go the opposite of expansion. For example, three, we're gonna go ahead and uh, condense. Here we go. Now be careful here. I'm gonna give you some rules when it comes to condensing logs. We're gonna condense them into a single logarithm Make sure, a couple of things, that you unblock logs before unapplying properties. Unblock logs before unapplying properties. Okay, when I say unblock logs, I'm referring to the coefficients. Any numbers in front of logs, those are the powers that need to be brought back uh, into the log. Another thing, we're going backwards from multiple logs into a single log. And I would highly recommend you, of course, do two at a time. Don't do three or four, don't go crazy. Look at 3a. This is a perfect example where we can't combine things together with the minus sign until you unblock, unclog the log, so to speak. Now, I've been holding back this whole time. Please ask me about log jokes. It may not be appropriate for the video, but I'd be happy to help you with log jokes, right? Okay, <clears throat> 3a, there's a five right there. That five is a coefficient that needs to be unblocked. I'm gonna unapply that property to here as well as a seven in the second log to right there. I can't do the subtraction, meaning the quotient property until I unblock the power. Watch what happens. Moving the five, I now get log base two of c to the fifth power. That's how you undo that, great. Same for the seven. Log base two of n to the seventh power, got it? So there I unapplied a power property. Now I'm gonna go ahead and unapply the subtraction. That subtraction means it's gonna be unapplying or going backwards of the quotient property. We're gonna go from there to a single log. Log base two of, now subtraction means division. Top is the c to the fifth, and the denominator is n to the seventh. And ladies and gentlemen, there's your answer. I noticed that last year I wrote this down. 
I'm going to do the opposite, which means I'm going to unquotient the problem, meaning the backwards of it. Uh, letter B is pretty much the same thing, a little boring. I can't un product yet until I unpowered first right there. So that two natural log seven becomes natural log of seven squared. Great. And now I'm going to go ahead and unpower the sign there between the two logs there. I'm going to unpower that one or unproduct. I didn't say power. I meant to say unproduct, not power. My bad. So when I do that, it becomes a single log, natural log, of course, of seven squared times two. So this is kind of interesting. You can actually clean that up a little bit. Seven squared is 49, 49 times two is 98. And there's a simplified natural log problem. All right, there's a habits of mind at the bottom here. This is kind of interesting. This is just like the opener. How do we do find the log of 18? They give us a couple of clues, right? Those clues are, and they are built into the calculator, log two, and there's a base 10. It's a common log, not mentioned there. Same thing over here, log base uh, 10 of three is equal to 0. 0.4771. So those are two clues given to us that we can utilize to find out what log 18 is. 18 is three times six. And six is three times two. Ladies and gentlemen, 18 is three times three times two. And we know from the properties above there, this is equal to log of three times three times two. So this becomes log three plus log three plus log two. Okay, makes sense? And we're actually just gonna manually, uh, let's see, we're gonna just manually put those numbers here. How's that sound? All right, I might have lost you guys for a second. Just make sure that I'm not using the wrong screen. Sorry about that. So log three is 0. 0.4771. Let's put that right there. And do it twice. And tack on the last one, 0 0.3. 0, 1, 0. And when you add those three numbers together, you'll get, and you'll get the same thing if you punch it in normally with a calculator, log 18, uh, 1.2552. It's just utilizing properties of exponents to find the logarithms based off of some clues given to us. All right. Let's go ahead and move on to the next page. Here we go. Let me know if you have any questions, of course. All right. I did this last year. It was very challenging, number four. I'm going to let you guys look at the notes that I have on my website for number four. I'm going to skip it for the video, to be honest. It's logarithms, manipulating using properties, but using chemistry as a background. I'm going to jump to example five. And before I do example five, I'm going to throw in an extra one here on the left. All right. So, a while back we mentioned that graphing logarithms with bases other than 10 or E is virtually impossible for the majority of graphing calculators. What we can do is we can utilize something called the change of base formula. This is one of the most favorite formulas in logarithms. This is pretty fancy. Here we go. What if I ask you to find the log base three of 22? Unfortunately, you can't put that into the calculator because calculators don't have base three, most of them. So what do we do? We're going to do something called change of base. 
So we can use the calculator to do it for us, figure it out. How do we change the base? Well, we, are, we want to change it from base 3 to something that we can use the lies on the calculator, base 10. You can use base E if you want to. Either way is fine. And the weird thing is it's very simple. All you have to do is punch in log 22 divided by log 3. When you punch in the calculator, we're assuming we're going to base 10. But look at it. Here's my original log base 3 of 22, and here's my change of base formula, log 22 over log 3. I'm going to spend some time in class and show, prove that to you if you like. That's no big deal to me. It's very simple, very easy. And by the way, the answer when you punch that into the calculator is 2.81358092. Okay? And it's not repeated. It just goes on forever, irrationally speaking. <clears throat> so you notice that, excuse me about my cough there, it's log of the big number divided by log of the smaller number of the base itself. Here's the formal definition, by the way. Change of base formula. Write this down. It's one of the easiest formulas out there. Change of base formula is if you're trying to go from base B to a different base, let's say base A, all you have to do is just basically do the log base B, I'm sorry, A, my bad, in this case, 10 or E, of the big number, M, divided by log base A of B. This is where we're going from base B to base A. I'm sorry, base M to base, I'm just going all over the place here, I'm sorry. From base B, sorry about that, to base A. That's what we're trying to do, okay? All right. Please be careful. Here are some common mistakes that happen sometimes. Some kids might do this. Log 15, oh, where did that come from? Oh, okay, I'm thinking of the next example. I'm sorry about that. I'll come to that in a moment. <clears throat> All right, so a few sections ago, when you were given a problem like this, we had to convert it to exponential form and solve it, and they came out really nice, right? We had powers and bases that came out nice with whole numbers. But here's the weird one. Log base 2 of 7 is not nice. 2 and 7 are not related to each other in any way in terms of exponents. I mean, if you tried, like, setting that equal to 0 and converting it to exponential form, you would run into a brick wall really, really fast. The base is 2, the boomerang is x, and it comes back to 7. And do you really know 2 to what power equals 7? The answer is no. You just don't know. So you have to use something called the change of base formula. So to do that, you just basically just rewrite it as log big number divided by log little number. And the, assum the assumption is it's base 10 on your calculator. And by the way, let's go ahead and calculate that right now. <clears throat> so let's take a look here. Uh, my calculator is backwards, so it's 7 log divided by 2 log equals 2.807. Then you ask this around to the nearest thousandth. So this answer is approximately 2.807, and that's it on the calculator. Okay. <clears throat> Same goes for letter B. It's pretty easy. Yay, log. 3 divided by log 5. And again, that's assuming it's simply base 10 on the calculator. You punch out in the calculator, you'll get 0 0.683. Trust me on that. 
Yay. Where is this located in example six? Any questions on example 5A or 5B? Sorry about that. All right. What is the solution to the equation 3dx equals 15? Express the solution as a logarithm and then evaluate. It's the same as in example five. It's no big deal. But there's a twist to the story. 3 to the x equals 15 is something you don't know. The answer, by the way, is not 5. We're not multiplying here. What if we converted it into log form? Let's do that. Sometimes you get stuck. I don't know what that is. However, if I go ahead and convert it to log form, I'll get this. Log base 3 of... 15 equals x. That's the progression, right? 3 to the x equals 15. Oh, look. Very good. I can use the change of base formula now to figure the rest of the problem. When I do that, I get log 15 divided by log 3. And when you punch out in the calculator, you get 2.465. Yay. And please be careful. Please be careful. Don't do this. That's a common mistake. It's two logs when you're using the change of base formula, okay? So please be careful. Here's another thing you don't want to do. Some people might want to reduce that. That's illegal. Don't do that either. You can't reduce across the two logs. All right. <clears throat> what is the change of base formula used for when evaluating logarithms with a calculator? We've already mentioned this. <clears throat> with the calculator, you can change it to base 10, the common log, or base E, the natural log base. Last page. Thanks for hanging in there. Good job. This definitely requires a lot of practice, but it's not too bad. You just have to know that there are properties you can manipulate. Use the properties of logarithms to expand the expression log base 6 of 49 over 5. Huh. So let's do that. We're going to expand. Take a look at what's going on here. We have a quotient first, so that's the most important. Using the quotient property of logs, I will get 1 log into 2 log base 6 of the numerator minus log base 6 of the denominator. Now, some kids may not pay attention here and say, hey, we're done, yay. But some of you out there might realize the number 49, oh, that's a perfect square. Let's rewrite that. 49, of course, is 7 squared, like that. The plot thickens. And then what do we do with that too? Well, that's the power property or the exponent. Fling that to the front. So we have two logs base six of seven minus log base six of five. And guess what? That is your final expanded problem. So keep an eye for those perfect squares. Next one, we're gonna go backwards. We're gonna go into a single log. We're gonna do a uh, condensed situation. All right, so we have, and I hate it when they give us S's and uh, those are really confusing. That's an S right there. Take five natural log of S plus six natural log of T, and I want you to unpower those numbers before we can combine the two logs together. You can't combine them because we're, we need to get it unblocked. So this now becomes, because of the uh, un they're going to unpower this, both of them. And we get, of course, natural log of s to the fifth power 
plus natural log of t to the sixth power. And now we can apply the uh, product. We're going to unproduct those two logs into a single natural log. Natural log of, and here it becomes multiplication, s to the fifth and t to the sixth. And ladies and gentlemen, there's your single condensed log. I'm going to skip number six, let you guys look at it in your notes, but thank you for hanging in there. Not too bad. Let me know if you have any questions. We'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.